are these militant atheists going to work on those particular days? I'm just kind of curious. Do they go to work on Christmas? Do they go to work? Oh, God. Jill, it's a crazy place, but I'm glad you brought that up. I did not know that. Uh, I do know this. C.J. Pearson. Are you, I'm talking to the producers of the program. Are you guys, Robert, uh, Jim, you guys, C.J. Pearson, remember that kid? He's the 14-year-old black kid who puts together these YouTube videos where he just rips apart the president. Have you seen any of those videos? So, okay, now I learn from my sidekick, Katie Green, that President Obama has blocked him as a Facebook follower. He's literally been blocked by POTUS. Sorry, I'm looking, I'm looking at the screenshot. You are blocked from following POTUS and viewing POTUS's tweets. How thin-skinned is that? It's the President of the United States of America, and you can't take a critic? Ah! Oh. Congratulations, C.J. Pearson. You have literally a little 14-year-old kid with a cheap camera and a YouTube account has gotten under the skin of the President of the United States of America and has been blocked as a Facebook follower. You are my hero. I, see, I look at kids like C.J. Pierce and I'm thinking, there is hope in this country. If we have enough guys like C.J., enough guys and gals, I can rest assured when I'm an old man, drool coming out of the side of my mouth, pushing a walker, I'm going to be okay because these people are going to be in control. Good Lord, as opposed to the woman who says, hey, we're going to overpopulate you. We'll take you over. We're going to be the majority someday. C.J. Pearson, you are a hero. Unbelievable. Well, let's see what else we have in the news. Robert calls from North Carolina. Robert, you're about to inform me. I was just mentioning how in California... We had this exit examination, so bef even if you passed all your, your high school courses, before you could get your diploma, you had to pass the standardized examination, get 55% correct, to make sure you know 8th grade math and ninth grade English. California legislature said, nope, that's not right. We're going to have to get rid of that test. What's going on in Arizona? What are you telling us here? In the state of Arizona, they actually instituted a policy that the students must pass a citizenship exam in order to, as part of a requirement, to receive their high school diploma, which I thought was a really good idea and should be instituted by more states across the country. Yeah, I think it's a fantastic idea. I, that would never fly in the state of California. I'll tell you why. Robert, thanks for your call on the Savage Nation. This is, this is amazing. I'm telling you, folks, it is the land of fruits and nuts out here. Uh, beautiful climate, but <laughs> in Los Angeles, uh, again, I originally hail from Los Angeles, East Los Angeles to be specific. Los Angeles has put forward a bid to host, I think it's the 2024 Olympics. So they want to be the host city for the Summer Olympics. <laughs> so, so listen to this. In their pitch to the International Olympic Committee, Los Angeles, the mayor of L.A., billed his city as the Latino capital of North America. <laughs> the activists believe that California is a part of this thing called Aslan. It's, it's a part of this, this country that used to be. Well, I guess they've shot and scored. You know, shoot and score like in hockey or, go, or soccer or whatever, right? I guess it would be soccer. That would be more appropriate since we're talking about Latin America. But L.A. is now being called the Latino capital of North America. We're, we're being balkanized before our very eyes. This is incredible. I, I've got to tell you this story. And we're going to dovetail back into just some of the crazy, crazy stuff coming from the religion of peace. My day was first ruined when I heard that woman speak saying, "Yeah, we're going to be the majority. You just wait and see. And then I find out that Obama has released another prisoner from Gitmo. And he's sending this prisoner to Saudi Arabia to be rehabilitated. Well, first of all, Saudi Arabia is where this guy's from. He comes from a very wealthy family. And two, 
Uh, can you read? I'm going to ask you this question. You, the listener of the Savage Nation, can you really rehab a guy who was Osama bin Laden's bodyguard? Is a person like that rehabable? The Department of Defense said he was. you could not rehabilitate him. They said it was highly likely that he would go back to the battlefield, join al-Qaeda. So what does Obama know that we don't know? That's the question on the Savage Nation, 855 855- 400-7282. And in just a moment when we come back, I've got to tell you the story. It's, it's fascinating. There's a, a gentleman I've met who, and I've spent time with him, he started out as a caller to my radio show. And he was, in, he was involved in intelligence at Gitmo. And I'll tell you what he has said about some of these bad guys that Obama has let go, including the five Taliban generals which were traded for the deserter Bo Bergdahl. Okay, so we'll talk about that. Can't wait. Brian Sussman filling in for Michael Savage on this, The Savage Nation. Join The Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. When Brian Sussman filling in for Michael Savage on this, The Savage Nation. Savage is back tomorrow. So I started, I, I teased you four or five minutes ago. And i got to give you the payoff. This is an incredible story. And it has to do with the, the, the really bad guy, the worst of the worst, I would say, being let go from Gitmo by Obama. And we find out today, oh, yes, he's gone. He's going to Saudi Arabia. He's going to be rehabilitated. And by the, this wasn't some disaffected young punk who got caught up in the wrong crowd. Uh, this is a guy from a very wealthy family. He was down for the cause, studied Sharia law at the college level, taught the Quran in schools, and then trained in the art of war, hand-to-hand combat style, and becomes Osama bin Laden's right-hand man. This guy's down for the cause. You're not going to change it. But i, I got to tell you this story. It's fascinating. Uh, years ago, I had a program. It, uh, it actually followed Michael Savage's show. So Savage was on in a different time slot. And then I would come on on KSFO. And it was, a, it was an evening show. And there was a guy that would call the evening show, and he told us that he had worked at Guantanamo Bay as an intelligence officer. And his stories were so incredibly compelling. One day I told my producer, get me his number. I want to call him back. So I called him back. We got together on several occasions. And he's the real deal. I mean, it was the first time I'd ever gotten together with a caller, right? Uh, he's the real deal. So now we fast forward many years later. So what is it, like a year, year and a half ago, the five Taliban generals are swapped for Bo Bergdahl. So this guy, we call him Gitmo Jim. Gitmo Jim is coming back into the country from Africa. He'd been completely out of the news cycle, didn't know what was going on. He's in the Dallas airport. He's looking at all the TV sets tuned to CNN. I'm sure they must have some kind of a deal carved out with all these airports. And he starts seeing these five Taliban generals, who he knows. He knows them personally. And he's going, "What? why are they in the news? Did they die or something? What happened? And he's looking at the screen. He's going, whoa, there are their names. Now, he didn't know them by name. He only knew them by 52327, 48956, 74089. He knew them by number. Now he's seeing their names for the very first time. And he's going, oh, my God, they must have died. So he's getting up to a television monitor to hear what's going on. And he finds out... They've been traded for a guy named Bo Bergdahl, and he, he almost says out loud, he may have said it out loud, in the middle of the airport, he goes, my God, these guys are killers. What are you doing? Folks, he knew them up close and personal. He had talked to them. He interrogated them. When he saw what Obama had done with these five bastards that he knew personally, he was shocked. He was absolutely shocked, and he came on our program to talk about it. I'm wondering what he's saying today when Osama bin Laden's right-hand guy is released, sent back to Saudi Arabia because he's going to be rehabilitated. How stupid are the people of America? Okay, I just ask you, what is happening in this White House? 
This fundamental transportation uh, transformation has just been ratcheted up a big notch. In the name of what? Barack Hussein Obama is living up to his middle name. He's living up to his middle name. Can we just say that? He's living up to his middle name. Do you really think that was a slip with George Stephanopoulos? Well, I've always uh, been proud of my Muslim faith, or whatever he said. And then Stephanopoulos, remember that? This is, what, 2007? Stephanopoulos, uh, in a row, you mean your Christian faith? Oh, yeah, my Christian faith. Come on, that would be... That would be like me today saying, well, you know, I've always uh, been proud of my Catholic faith. There's no way that's going to come out of my mouth. Nothing against Catholics, but the only time I've ever been to a Catholic church was for a wedding. I mean, come on. That's, that's just not going to happen. My Muslim faith. I mean, um, you mean your Christian faith. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah, my Christian. Come on. What is happening here? So we'll open up the lines and talk about that. It's just that wrecked my day. So you had the, the one-two punch. The woman in New Jersey says, yeah, we'll, we'll be the majority someday. And then that, that was a bam, bam, sucker punch that just started my day out terribly. Uh, so more to talk about. But Brian Sussman in for the doctor, Dr. Michael Savage. MichaelSavage.com is the website. Mike's back tomorrow on the program. So the Pope is sucking up all the oxygen in the news cycle. There's a mass going on in D.C., and the cameras are there, and the reporters are there, and this is what we're seeing, I think, basically in all the networks. But there's a lot of other stuff going on in the news that we're just not talking about as a result. Well, we are on the Savage Nation, as you would expect. Uh, the Pope did come out today, and he was talking about global warming, and he was talking about climate change, and in doing so, he talked about sustainable development, code name for redistribution of wealth, a term coined by a guy named Maurice Strong, who put together the environmental program for the United Nations. I know a lot about this. I've written a lot about it. I've studied it. So whenever you hear a guy like the Pope, who's, you know, academically, he's, he's a brilliant guy, um, he knows what he's talking about. He's doing the work of the United Nations. Something, by the way, that Marie Strong, something that the United Nations, something that Al Gore, something that, um, that Mikhail Gorbachev always wanted. Their dream was to get buy-in from uh, Christianity, from the Roman Catholic Church, and from the mainstream churches, particularly in America. They wanted buy-in, and they've gotten that. So green has become the new religion for a lot of uh, a lot of people that are of these quote-unquote faiths. So let's go to this caller. This is rather interesting because we've got uh, Stephen, WABC. Stephen, with that introduction, so to speak, you're on the Savage Nation. Go right ahead. Uh, yes. Uh, you know, we have federal mandates right now pushing us as consumers to buy into LED, which is great technology, but all of that LED is made in China. Additionally, we're being pushed towards green energy with solar, all that solar is being made in China. Mm -hmm. So I find it interesting that we have these mandates here to push us towards green energy, and we're buying stuff from China, which is one of the largest polluters on the planet. Oh, and they're, I mean, they really seriously do damage to the environment. They don't care. Yeah. They blow it out their tailpipes like nobody's business. I've always thought it was curious, Stephen, where's Greenpeace? You'd think instead of standing in front of every Whole Foods in America with their clipboards trying to raise money, they'd be in Beijing protesting. <laughs> you know, that air that comes out over there, it's not just theirs. That's, that's our air, too. So, and I'm Well, there you go. It's, it's all the people's air. I thank you for your call. No, but Stephen's right. I mean, the, and by the way, these new technologies are being driven by Obama's buddies, in the Silicon Valley, who are making bank off of going solar. I mean, Elon Musk, for example, he's got a huge solar company, Solar City, that he's a part of. But the and these are mandates. Look at in California what they're doing. There's a law now that I can't remember the date. I th think it may be 2030. But there's a law in the books that by a certain date, half the cars in this state sold will be. And I'm speaking to you from the San Francisco Bay Area. Half the cars in this state sold will be electric. Okay, who benefits from that? Well, all the electric car makers. These are mandates that are being pushed through policy. But let's go beyond that for just a moment. You look at all of the big voices in solar. All the people who have loads of cash in solar. 
speaking to a lot of people in New York City. Michael Bloomberg.